Hey Harvest, we have been given an awesome grant of $10,000 from Converge Mid-America. That's so amazing. And what they're giving us that, that $10,000 for is for a launch fund, meaning to get all of the things necessary for our kids' ministry, uh, for our signage, our setup, our teardown, coffee, tables, uh, all types of things, some things for tech to help us launch Harvest Church. And so what I want us to do is see if we can take that 10,000 and turn it into 20 or 25,000. And so all of that money would go toward the materials that we need to launch successfully. And you guys have already been super generous. Thank you so much for your giving over the last three months. I mean, it's been unbelievable. And so this is a way that I just want to come and, and say, hey, here's a challenge. Um, let's, let's take the 10,000 and let's make it into 20 or to 25,000. Some of the ways that you can give is this. Uh, you can go to harvest.247 and go to the giving page and you can click the uh, to give. And if you want to give to what we're calling the launch fund, uh, you can hit the drop down box, click launch, and it'll go right for uh, launch, and it will be spent for launch. Um, another way you can do that is you can go on your app, um, and you can give it on the app as well. This is a unique opportunity for us to really be able to launch well, um, to be able to um, get all of the necessary things that we need to give people an incredible, authentic experience with Jesus when they come and visit Harvest Church for the first time. And so what I'd ask you to do is just prayerfully consider um, giving an offering um, to this fund. And uh, as you continue to tithe and you continue to give, uh, just, just pray and see what God uh, would give you. And so here, here's what I want to do. Uh, by August the 14th, we'd like to see uh, those funds come in. And so Converge has, has pledged to give us that $10,000. And so by August the 14th, we would like to be able to multiply that from 10 to 20 to possibly $25,000 to help cover our launch cost as we move forward and get ready to launch Harvest Church. Thanks so much for prayerfully considering uh, participating and thank you so much for your generosity. Okay, so habits are those things that are sometimes really good and sometimes bad. Um, I have a really bad habit, which is biting my fingernails. So if you've ever been around me, especially if I'm in a meeting or something, I just have a bad habit of biting my fingernails. I have since I was five years old. I've tried to quit, I've done good, I haven't done great, you know, whatnot. Some other people may have some bad habits like drinking too many Diet Cokes or who knows what else you do. Um, but we also have sometimes good habits, right? Whether it's eating healthy, have a regular workout routine, you know, uh, drink plenty of water, um, whatever that read, you know, whatever those habits are. Well, I want to talk about some habits today, and this is a definition of habits. Habits are behaviors that we perform on a regular basis and they are somewhat automatic behaviors. Uh, some say that habits make up 40% of our daily behaviors. And this is kind of the process for, for our habits and how they're formed. And it's an environmental cue, a behavioral response, and a reward, meaning a removal of unpleasant stimulus. So that's what forms the habit. It's that social cue. It's that behavioral response to that social cue. And that response is to hopefully uh, remove unpleasant stimulus. And so if it's a negative habit, it's because it's trying to remove unhealthy stimulus. If it's a good habit, then it's also removing unhealthy stimulus, right? So if you um, do not like your waistline, for instance, um, and you want to start a new habit, you eat well because why? The uh, unpleasant stimulus is your waistline. So you form a new habit in order to, to do that. Um, but if you feel stressed out a whole lot um, or, or whatnot, you may get yourself into some other habit to get rid of that um, unhealthy stimulus. So that's kind of our unpleasant stimulus. So that's how a habit is formed. They work positively and they work negatively. The more often the cue, behavior, and reward occurs in close proximity to one another, the stronger the habit becomes. So if there is a immediate relief when you have a behavior to a, um, a uh, environmental cue, then you are going to repeat that behavior in order to get rid of that cue 
how, whatever that might be, positive and or negatively. So here's the thing. We want people to know Jesus and follow Him. Okay, and grow with Him. In order for that to happen, we want to develop some behavioral habits within our church. Um, so we are after behaviors, not necessarily the things that produce behaviors. So here's what I mean by that. We may try something, but if it doesn't produce the behaviors we're after, we're just going to scrap it. Uh, we may start something and it works for a while, but if all of a sudden it, we don't see those behaviors reproduce, then we will stop it. Why? Because one of our core values is we embrace change to discover what's next to advance the kingdom. And why are we are, why are we about all of these habits? Why is this so important for us? Is because we are building an army, not an audience. We are not starting Harvest Church for us to sit around, sing Kumbaya, hold hands, and just have a great time. We hope that we're going to have a great time. We hope we're going to grow together, rejoice with each other as we rejoice, mourn with each other that mourn. But we also want to live on mission and we want to build an army, not an audience because God has given you some gifts to use and you can use them in a unique way like nobody else can. And so uh, I want to go through these really, really quickly. What are these six habits that we're talking about? So the first one is salvation. If you read Acts 4.12, it says this, salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind which must be saved. So we believe that Jesus is the only way to be saved. And we, and we want people to know Jesus. That's what we want to do. And so our main point in our name, Harvest Church, and our philosophy and our pathway church and, and how we want to do ministry is to reach unreached people so that they will know Jesus and so that they can grow with Him, right? So the knowing part is important. If we see we're not reaching new people, if we're seeing we're not reaching lost people, we're going to adjust our method to reach them. Why? Because we want to see people saved. We believe that one of the primary uh, purposes of the church is to share the gospel and to see people saved and come to know Jesus. And so the first behavior is salvation. What well, follows after salvation? Well, that's baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says this, For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. So don't take that out of context. That's all I'm saying. Okay, don't take that part out of context. We believe that baptism is an outward expression of the inward work Christ has done. And so we are baptized into one. What the Apostle Paul is writing is this. No matter our background, no matter our heritage, we have one Baptize, baptism from one spirit and in Christ we are one. We could be from the other side of the world. Uh, we could have lived in poverty. We could have struggled with anything. Uh, it doesn't matter what our background, our history says. What God says is this, is that in Christ we are of one spirit, which is Jesus, and we are baptized in one baptism. And so that is what that means. And so we want to see baptisms. Why? Because that is a number we're going to track every year. And some people might say, why would we track numbers? Church isn't about numbers. Church isn't about tracking. Well, here's what I'd say. Every number is a person and every person is a story and every story matters to God. And so baptisms are important. We want to see people Know Jesus and grow with Him. Uh, serving. One of our core values is this, is that we believe that serving is a get-to, not a got-to. So it's not, a, it's not a, oh man, I have to serve. Oh my gosh, I have to serve. It's no, I get to serve. I get to use the gifts that God has given me to advance His kingdom. I get to serve and bless others. I get to serve and have a smile on my face and say, hey, welcome to Harvest today. Hey, I get to share some love with people and hug people. I get to pray with people. I get to set up the tech team because we know that this message is going to get broadcast out and other people are going to see it online. I I get to. It's a get to, not a got to. And so 1 Corinthians 12 says this, Paul writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. 
You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. We are all led to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one is speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is the Lord except the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. So there's the Holy Spirit in us, but there's a variety of gifts, meaning the gift of teaching uh, and, and the gift of evangelism the gift of hospitality, all of those types of things, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. So there's multiple services, multiple opportunities to serve, but we're all serving the same Lord. I will tell people often, I just got the speaking part. I'm not that great administratively. I'm not that great in a lot of things. I just got the speaking part. That's just it. It's part. It's one part of the body. That's how Paul says that uh, we operate. And so every person has a gift that God wants to use to advance the kingdom. Right now, we are recruiting volunteers um, for not from you. We don't want something from you, but we want something for you because we believe that when you serve, it's one of the best ways to grow in your faith is to get involved in personal ministry in the local church and use your gifts. And what's great is, is that right now you have a unique opportunity. Not too many people get to say we're part of a church plant, a new work that God is doing. And so this is a unique opportunity to get involved um, in some capacity, in some way, shape, or form, and to say, hey, I want to use my gifts on the ground floor, on the startup of something new that God is doing. If you want, uh, go ahead and let your Harvest Home leaders know where you would want to serve. We've got multiple areas, whether it be in the tech, whether it be set up, tear down, whether it be in kids, greeting, doing coffee, setting out signs, all of those types of things. Those are ways that you can serve and use your gifts to serve. And so it's a unique opportunity. Harvest Home Leaders, go ahead and talk to your group about that. Engage your group around that. We would love for you to partner with us and live on mission. Um, the next one is giving. Malachi 3.10, bring the full tithe, which is 10%, that's what that word tithe means, into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So God says, supply the food and the needs of my house, and watch this, and thereby put me to the test. So God says, test me on this. And if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. We believe that everything we have is from the Lord, that He gives us our portion, and it's our responsibility to tithe that back, to give that back to His church, to make sure that His kingdom can advance. And I believe that as you give, God will bless you. I'm not saying that He's going to give you an abundance. I'm not saying He's going to give you a Ferrari. I'm not going to promise that He's going to give you a beach house. I'm I'm not going to promise all that, but I know this. He will take care of your every knee. He always does. He always will as you tie the hymn. And here's the thing that we're doing. Um, I've been saying for a couple of weeks that we have been given a $10,000 grant uh, from Convergement America. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to take that $10,000 and we want to turn it into twenty dollars or $25,000 to help with our startup cost. And so what we believe is that a tithe is 10%, but that an offering is above the 10%. And so what I'm asking you to do is prayerfully consider giving that a above 10% to that $20,000, $25,000 goal as we sow that into our church, as we begin to launch, get all the things that we need uh, to have service and for, for kids and signage and t-shirts and coffee and coffee makers and things that we need for the band and tech and all of those types of things. And so I would just prayerfully uh, ask you to prayerfully consider being a part of that. And here's what I know about God. You can never outgive Him. And when you're faithful to give to Him, He will provide for your every, every need. And so we believe that giving is an essential part of following and growing with Jesus. Um, the fifth behavior is being in a group. Uh, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says this, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What this passage of Scripture is saying is that community is good for us. It's not good for us to be alone, whether man or woman, but it's not good for us to be alone, meaning as a family unit or as a person. We, God 
God wants to put us in families, meaning the family of God. And so being in a group is extremely important. So if you are watching this, you're already in a Harvest Home. And we've heard such great things about Harvest Homes. How people are staying at houses until 10 p.m. Um, how people are getting to know each other on a deeper level. And that's what we believe healthy biblical community is is. And so we would just encourage you to invite people into that. And as we get going, we're going to launch discipleship groups as well. And we will want you to know about that as well to take that next clear step in uh, growing with Jesus. And then finally, multiplication. One of our core values is we are building an army, not an audience. Um, I believe, uh, if this is just my opinion, um, I believe that the spirit, spiritual maturity in a person is shown when they begin to multiply themselves. So I believe it's discipleship. It's the Great Commission. It's what we see Jesus do. It's what we see His disciples do. It's what we see Apostle Paul do through Timothy and Titus. And it's exactly why we're here today is because people have made disciples of the next generation all along. And I believe that the um, sign of a spiritually mature person is not how much they know, but how much they invest in others and how many people they multiply and how many disciples they make and how intentional they are in that. And we get that from the Great Commission, right? Now go, uh, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him and they worshiped him, but some doubted, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Uh, one of our ministry philosophies is, is simply this. We want to multiply new believers, new disciple makers, and new churches. I believe that's the heart. That's the heart of harvest. If you were to say to me five years from now, what, what would be successful? I would say, well, have we multiplied new believers? Have we multiplied disciple makers? And are we launching new churches? And if we are, I'm going to say that's fantastic. I'm not going to talk about numbers, not talk about how many people we got, uh, how many activities we got. Are we multiplying people? I believe it is a um, spiritually mature person is someone who multiplies. I believe a spiritually mature church is a church that multiplies as well. Why? Because we want people to know Jesus and grow with Him.